Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where we talk about very interesting decks to play around with. And today we're back into the monster faction. While everybody's out there revealing cards left and right for the new Price of Power expansion, I thought to myself, let's make another monster deck. Because right now, as we speak, there are currently being a, a few very nice monster cards are being revealed. And um, just in honor of that, and because of some of the changes that were made to Foglets, I wanted to actually make a weather-based monsters deck. And I think I... If I can say so myself, I think I kind of achieved that. It's not the most competitive deck out there, but it's still a very fun deck to play around with. So let's head into the deck builder. So I dubbed this deck the Deadly Chills deck, because we're going to be using the White Frost leader ability. It's kind of a merger of a weather effect deck combined with Death Wish units, which is why you might actually recognize a lot of these cards. But if, as always, if you know what these cards do, don't hesitate to just skip to the example matches. Uh, you can do so in the timeline down below. But for everybody else, we're gonna go through each and every card one by one. So yeah, let's do exactly that. So at the bottom, the new Arcus Spore starts at four power and basically has the original Foglet ability. So on that wish, you summon the copy of this unit from your deck to the row. So just if you destroy this card, you have the other one in your uh, from your deck onto the field. So a little bit of thinning and allows you to just play eight points for that simple consume if you manage to destroy this card, of course. And we have the new Foglets, because of course Foglets aren't gone from the game. They still have four power, but they gained a new Deadwish ability. So when they die, they spawn Fog on the opposing row for three turns. So possibly up to 10 points of value if you manage to kill the Foglet. It. But of course, Fog is very important to keep in mind. Fog is one of the weather effects in the, this deck. But Fog damages the lowest power unit on that row by two at the end of at the start of their turn, not the end of their turn, the start of their turn. So uh, very important to keep in mind because uh, there's a few decks that kind of defend against this really, really well. Then we have the NL Conqueror. There's a lot of wild hunt units in this deck as well. It is a devotion deck, so that's why this card is in here. Seven power, Veil, but if you don't have devotion, he destroys himself on the ploy. But of course, we do have devotion, so this guy will stay alive. So a fancy seven for four provisions. Then we have the Cyclops. The Cyclops actually also got a small change to his ability. So originally, you needed to play this guy on the melee row. Now that row limitation is is gone so for four power and five provisions you can deploy him on the board and you can destroy an adjacent allied unit basically functioning as a death wish catalyst and deal the power of the unit that it has destroyed as damage to a selected enemy of your choice so very powerful damage dealer because you can even just take one of your high powered units and transform that into damage if you want to kill something really big on the opposite side giving you a little bit of firepower if you need it then we have the Nagelfar's Taskmaster or Purify option. So if you don't have dominance, you can only purify an enemy unit. So good to take out defender statuses and the like. But if you have dominance, so you have the highest unit on the field, you can purify any unit, so including your own, to get rid of locks or uh, poisons, for example. Then the Wild Hunt Bruisers. There's a lot of frost in this deck. So the Wild Hunt Bruiser definitely takes advantage of that. Because if you deploy him, you can move an enemy unit to the other row. And if the row that that unit ends up in, you is targeted by Frost, you also damage that unit by two. You also have five power and one point of armor. So possibly a seven point with a tiny little bit of armor for five provisions. And of course you move that unit as well. So uh, row locked abilities will also be disabled. Then we have the bar guest. We have a few dead wish units in this deck. So definitely we need at least one consumer. So the bar guest is one of the strongest cards for that purpose. So five power and on the pole you can consume an allied unit. And if you have dominance, you can do that again on your next turn or any of the consecutive turns because he has the order ability with the exact same ability. Then the Rot Fiend, the simple Death Wish unit that starts at 5 power and this, well, damages a random enemy unit by 4 if you manage to kill it, kind of linking to his natural ability if you've uh, played any of the games where he explodes when he dies. So yeah, that's where that 4 damage is coming from. And the Ancient Foglet, probably the, the well, the main reason why I wanted to create this deck, the Ancient Foglet got a new ability. He starts with Veil, so he can be targeted by 
poisons or locks or anything like that starts at four power as well and when you deploy him you boost himself he boosts himself by the total duration of row effects on your enemy's sides for example if you have two turns of frost on one row of your opponent this card will be immediately boosted to six but he also have a, has a passive ability that whenever you apply a row effect, he also boosts himself by that duration. So every single time you add a row effect to your opponent's side of the board, you gain extra points on top of that with this card, which is basically the support that this archetype really needed because this card can go really high in this deck. Then of course we need to have ways to apply that frost so Red Riders is a wild hunt special card where you can choose to either spawn frost on one enemy row for four turns or on both of your enemies rows for two turns so always giving you four turns of frost but very flexible in how you want to uh, use this. And then we have the Apiarian Phantom, another wild hunt unit that starts at 4 power, but at the end of your turn, as long as you don't use the order ability, he boosts himself by 1. So basically, a patience engine, because if you use the order ability, if you're on the melee row, you can damage an enemy unit by 3 as well, which can come in handy either by the end of the round, or if you really, really need that 3 damage, you can use it right away and just go for 7 points for 7 provisions, which is also not that bad. Then the Imperial Manticore. This is a very important unit in any Deathwish decks these days because of course the Deathwish ability on the Imperial Manticore gives you the advantage to kill the lowest enemy unit on the board. If you do this earlier on your opponent will only have something pretty strong on the board already and you can destroy it with this card in one go without you needing to focus on anything else so just destroys the lowest enemy if you use the stratagem in this deck i might actually take a look at that we also need to use the new urn of shadows card as a stratagem so you can trigger a death wish of an allied unit whatever you want it to be so you can also do this on the imperial manticore giving you an instant destroy on whatever your opponent has played first but continuing on with the remaining cards we have gals which is who is a tutor card for wild hunt special cards so starts at two power but when you deploy on the rage row you can draw any wild hunt special card from your deck there's three of them in the deck and you already saw the red riders the other two we'll be talking about shortly then we have the winter queen which i think is a card that you really need to add to your deck if you're going with weather effects starts at four power has thrive in this deck because you that's why we have Devotion as well. And at the end of your turn, if there's Frost on both of your enemies' uh, rows, you will summon this card from your deck to the ranged row. So you know where this card is going to end up. And it will also be pulled from your deck if you uh, have Frost on both of your enemies' rows. So definitely a mulligan target that you want to get rid of rather quickly. Then another Wild Hunt special card is Imlerith's Wrath. Damage an enemy unit by the power of your highest unit. If you uh, control Imlerith, which we won't in this uh, deck, you destroy an enemy unit instead. So we just damage an enemy by the power of the highest unit in our board at the moment. So since this also um, this deck also includes a lot of death wish abilities, we have a few consumes, and therefore we have a few high powered units that we can transform into damage with Imlerith's Rod, aside from the ogres as well. Then of course we have Maruna in here as well, since of course we're dealing with death wish abilities, five power, and on a, well. Well, on her death, on her death wish, she seizes a random enemy unit with four or less power. Um, very powerful if you manage to pull this off earlier on, especially in combination with the stratagem as well. You can sometimes guarantee which card you can get. Regardless, even if you only pull a two power card, you still get nine points for this card. So definitely worth it in my opinion. Then we have our final Wild Hunt special card, Art Gate, which is also an Echo card. You can use this twice. You spawn Frost on both of your enemies' rows for three turns. So six turns of uh, row effects in total. If you want to know that for the Ancient Foglet, he will boost himself by six in one go on top of what this card already does. To complement the Frost, of course, we have Aridin himself. So six power for ten provisions, but on the ploy, you also spawn Frost on an enemy row for two turns. So that's another four points of damage possibly and if you have dominance or you have the highest power unit on the field you increase the damage dealt by frost in general by one so this works on both of your opponent's uh, rows not just a row that he applied frost on so frost will deal three damage to the highest power unit on that row 
every single start of their turn. So very powerful card if you can keep him alive. He should be at least alive for one turn. Uh, but other than that, he's usually a target that gets really quickly destroyed, especially since we don't really have a defender. But we also have Oberon, of course, the king of the wild hunt. We really, really need this card in here as well. The evolution card eventually ends up as Oberon the Conqueror, since we have Devotion. Has Veil as all evolution cards do. And on deploy you create and play a bronze wild hunt unit. And every single unit that you play that is of the wild hunt category will also be boosted by one as long as Oberon is still on the field. So including the one that he creates. We will be trying to use this either on a um, NL Conqueror, which is of course 8 points with Oberon, or one of the Bruises, which will also be 8 points since you can damage a unit into another Frost Row. Then the final card is Hunt. I told you that this card is, um, well, this deck is basically a combination of Weather Effects and Deathwish, so Hunt should also be in here. Hunt is a scenario card of monsters, so and it will progress whenever you play a Deathwish unit, which is why we have quite a few of them in our deck. At the start you play a Desert Banshee which allows you to consume an allied unit on order and also boosts it herself by uh, one for every every time you play a unit with a Deathwish ability. Second is the Barghest, of course we know what that guy already does. And then the Night Raid for 3 power spawns 2 rats and when she is destroyed she spawns another 2. So very powerful card. Uh, if you don't want to use the Death Wish package in this deck, there's also an alternative where you get rid of Haunt and Imlerith's Wrath and you can swap that out for Unseen Elder and then the uh, Crimson Curse because Crimson Curse also works very well in this deck because the Blood Moon that triggers for 5 turns is also a row effect so it also triggers your Ancient Folklets which is really powerful on top of the 6 points with the Akimaras you receive. So that's kind of a variation of this deck that you might want to check out but I feel like the Death Wish combination is more powerful. Lastly our leader ability is White Frost so 2 charges of this order ability where you move an enemy unit to the other row so disabling row, um, row locked abilities and you also spawn frost on that row for two turns so the row that you move that unit towards so basically giving you eight points of damage and two moves which is a really good balanced ability to my mind it's not too overpowered it just gives you a little bit of control over what your enemy will be doing so with that said let's head into a few example matches where i most likely will be tanking my mmr stats and our first opponent of today is reckless flurry that is gonna be interesting we have a bit of uh, death wish abilities so it could be that we have a good stack of units that we can just slam on the board and that our opponent, if they destroy them, would be really, really problematic towards. But we don't have blue coins, so we don't have the stratagem. So we're going to have to be careful here. I already have two Death Wish units in my hand if I want to play Haunt, so that is good. So let's get rid of the Foglets for now. We get the Archospore, so that means I can probably get rid of the Rot Fiend. There we go, okay. Not the best hand to start with, but we're on red coins, so we don't really need to push that aggressively. Usually when you play Reckless Flurry, we've seen that in the previous deck guide, we want to avoid... Well, we'll see the discard package at the start. We even start with Maxi Van Decker. Um, but we'll see the discard package in the start. Ooh, that's actually a really good target for Imperial Manticore if we want to. Let's keep it slow for now. The row effects are usually... Um, you can be very liberal with your row effects if you want to. So I think I'll just start with a 4 point frost on the back row over there. So we don't give them, give them a target yet to destroy. Because of course Reckless Flurry wants to damage your units and as long as there are no units on the field then we don't really have a problem now do we? We also have a bruiser in our hand so we can definitely move a unit to that row to just complete the damage cycle there. To just ensure that we have those uh, 8 points of damage by the way I kind of forgot. Kind of miscalculated there so that's 8 points of damage if we can fully complete the frost. But we won't need to because our opponent is actually all too happy to put one of their own units right over there. So I think that is fine. We get a single discard. But nothing too interesting apparently. So that means that there are no good discard cards in their hand just yet. Hmm. The question now is do I want to push with Halt? I don't think so just yet. Let's put 
the ancient foglet down, so he will boost himself to seven immediately because there's three turns of frost still on the board. So that's a good start. And of course, the frost is still ticking down, so giving us slight point advantage immediately. And now we got Coral, so Coral will definitely damage the uh, foglet there. And they have two discards because their stratagem also gives them a discard. So that's one, and then the stratagem will do that again. So we still have a three point foglet. Uh, but yeah, our opponent clearly has the advantage there. And they finally got a card to properly discard there as well. And another reckless flurry charge on top of that. So yeah, our opponent is really, really ruthless at the moment. I could play Haunt now, now but Haunt's um, Imperial Manticore will only be two points. So I'm going to keep Haunt for later. Um, I can still... There's not much I can do, actually. I could put the API in Phantom down, but I'm just going to play a few lower level cards just to see where this goes if our opponent passes then they do but right now we can still uh, bridge that gap if we want to so our opponent is taking their time if they don't know what to do just yet okay so they go for Grammist. Hmm. interesting so Grammist puts them to 22 i definitely still have the cards to surpass that so let's just go with the apiary and phantom now i could immediately kill coral if i want to um i'm not going to since i think the points i'm getting from just the passive ability is going to be enough to put us over okay we get a purify on the apiary and phantom which is fine i suppose not that our opponent will have the opportunity to lock. Oh, they do with Dorga Ray. Ooh, fancy. Okay, so that means that I really need to uh, pass now. Unless I put Haunt on the field now, but even Haunt. Haunt will be. So that's gonna be 5, 10, 18 points if I really wanna push. But I don't think I will, because there's way too many low powered units on the field right now. So let's just, let's just pass. We still have the push op options in round two, if we really want to. If we really, really want to. Okay, so there we go, we lost round one. But our opponent was really aggressive, took out the entire field at one point, and then locked our only engine card. So that was to be expected. Okay, so we're getting that wish units. I don't want the Winter Queen in hand, so that's definitely a mulligan option. And then the Arc Sports are also not really useful so let's get rid of that we get another dead wish unit okay that means that i really should go for the dead wish units now i'll see what our opponent plays if they really want to push ooh, they're pushing with burna well they're not pushing they're probably just going to discard a few cards morkvark and the are they getting both no so that's 11 points 11 points i can definitely get rid of that uh, so yeah, let's just put the NL Conqueror down, which is still 7 points, and then we can, if our opponent passes, we can just play the Rot Fiend. If they don't, then I'll probably push with Haunt. And we get this Fall Blood Totem, okay. So that's two 4 power units, and that's going to transform into two 6 power units, so let's play Haunt now, definitely, so we can push. We still don't have a lot of our good cards, by the way. There's a lot of good cards still in our deck because we don't have Orbion, we don't have... Look at this. We don't have Art Gate, we don't have Erdin, we don't have Orbion. We didn't even get Gels to tutor anything. And Maruna is still there as well. But Haunt is going to be enough to just give us uh, the advantage here. We can even play the uh, Manticore right now if you want to. Unless our opponent now plays a low power unit, but... Uh, uh, which they definitely can. There's usually those um, the quartermasters, the bear witch quartermasters. So they put those to six. So they're definitely going to continue. I'm guessing there's no Korati heatwave in that deck. The classic version doesn't, at least. And they get ooh Hjalmar. Okay, so that means that there now is a low power unit on the board. Are they gonna? They're gonna continue. Ooh, wow. Okay. They're really going for it. So this is a complete push. Fair enough. Uh, let's play Arcaspore. And then let's play the Bargast right on top of that. 
and I really should start playing some frost on the other row so we don't waste those uh, abilities there. There we go. So we still have two Deathwish units on the board, on, well, in hand. Um, actually three, and I can't destroy uh, all of them. It's really annoying because we lost the consume. And we got a pass there. Okay, that's good. Because I wouldn't have been able to do anything else. Um, do need to be careful, although I don't think so. Yeah, there's going to be plenty of points on the board there. Um, I'll just get rid of one of the foglets. So there we go, we get the nitrate and then we can consume the foglet and put fog on that front row and the weather effects are going to take care of everything there. There we go, okay, so that was pretty clean. That was pretty clean. I really want Oberon now. If we can get Oberon and don't get the Winter Queen in our hand, that's also very important, we should be good to go. And we get the Barga so I don't even waste the, the Death Wish units here. Hmm... I think I'm going to get rid of the Rot Fiend. And now I think I need to even get rid of... Ooh, that's going to be... If we pull Gels now, I don't have any Wild Hunt cards. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. Okay, it's not the best hand, but it's something I can work with. Okay, the first card is really, really annoying though. I don't really know what to play here. I could play Imperial Manticore. But if they just have a stunning blow, that will kill it in one go. Uh, although I might as well. Still have Imrigit's Wrath as well, so... Let's get rid of the Imperial Manticore. Whatever they're gonna play now is gonna die. And we get the Giga Scorpion Decoction. Alright, okay, so that was still in their deck. Uh, so we basically wasted the Imperial Manticore there, because there was no effect, but we're still zero across from zero the purify if they have tier v i'm gonna need that purify yeah i think it's the only card that i really can play here so let's just purify which is not gonna do anything but it's a good start nonetheless if we had orbiton but orbiton is still in the deck sadly um so yeah we're gonna have to see what we can do with the cards that we have and we get the brockfar hunter so i can move that card which means that I can just use the Ancient Foglet now. Let's put that right next to the Taskmaster and move the Brockfire Hunter to the front row. There we go. Giving us two more points on the Ancient Foglets and that's taking out the Hunter as well because the Hunter is row locked to the ranged row. Opponent is deciding and they're going with Hern Kadoof. They'll be on the back row there. Going with the Bear Witcher Quartermaster there, which is really, really interesting. Um, hmm. And they destroyed the Brockfire Hunter, which was already destined to die. I could go for Eredin now, but Eredin would be a waste, I think. Yeah, let's start with just Art Gate. So that's going to be six more points on the Ancient Foglet. If our opponent has Morgfark, which is definitely a possibility, then that Ancient Foglet is destined to die as well. But right now we seem to have the advantage the upper hand. We can still move one more unit and we can apply a bit more frost to that back row which is still pretty well filled with all sorts of nastiness. And then we get Gert. Gert is a very high powered unit so that seems like a very good option to just move to the other side and continuously receive damage. So let's move Gert over there and we get some extra damage on those guys. There we go. I think they were trying to force out the double damage from the Frost and then uh, on top, yeah, to get the healing out of her in Kaduch. So next up on our side is going to be Eredin. And then we can kill basically two more high-powered units with uh, Emirates Wrath and the uh, Ogre here, the Cyclops here. So it all depends on what our opponent has left. We can definitely take out some engine. There we go. Okay. So, Tirk V is gonna, yeah. Okay, that's actually perfectly fine. I'm gonna use the Cyclops to actually use the... Um, destroy the Winter Queen myself and then damage Tirk V with it. So basically returning the favor. <laughs> so, there we go. Cyclops onto Winter Queen onto Tirk V. Basically getting rid of that uh, rupture 
And then we still have Eredin to put some extra frost damage on that back row. It's not going to be that much. But we'll just have enough turns to let that final bit of frost tick on. There's going to be still a Morgue Fark in there, I suppose. I could have also put that 4 damage on the Quartermaster, but Dirk V was going to get hit by frost regardless, so it wouldn't have been the highest power unit anyway. So as long as we still get something juicy now for Imlid's Wrath, we should be fine. But I'm guessing Morgue Fark is going to hit the, there we go, the Ancient Foglet. Might be a bit too soon. Because, uh, of course, now we can still add two more points on top of that, because Eredin is going to give us some extra damage here with uh, three times damage every single time. But, of course, it's going to be only one more turn of three point damage there. We still have um, Dominance, and I'm pretty sure we'll be able to keep it throughout the final turn. We get Erden, which is basically useless. Because uh, we're still going to keep our dominance by hitting uh, Tirgvi here for 6 damage. And then we're going to get 3 more damage from the Frost. So that's 6 damage and that's going to be 3 more damage. And that needs, our opponent needs 13 points to win. Which I don't think is going to work. And we get, yes, Karate. There was a Karate Heatwave in there. Interesting, so Karate Heatwave and Urn, but there we go. We won our first match with this, never mind, my uh, my MMR is going to be doing fine. So next up is another Skellig around with Ursine Ritual this time, and we're going first. We might be able to take advantage of our Deathwish abilities this time, if we can get a few. We actually get a few, that is good enough for now. We also get the Barghest and the Cyclops, so... This is a good batch of first units. I only need one Ancient Foglet right now. The Purifier is not necessary at the moment. We get Gels. I think a Secondary Bruiser is also not necessary. So the Red Riders might as well come in hand as well. Okay, first up, now we actually have a chance to play it properly. So let's start with the Archospores. Those are completely harmless. If they get destroyed, then we get another one in return. So very good starting card just in general, especially against Skellige. Aha, so this is a good point. Let's use Maruna immediately now because we also have the Urn of Shadows. So if you use Maruna, she's going to get damaged by the longship, but we can trigger her ability without destroying her, by the way, and just grab that longship. Our opponent will most likely now destroy Maruna just to get rid of the ability. Because, um, of course, as long as she's on the board, I can use that ability. <laughs> but we still have the... Yeah, there we go. So Champion's Charge is going to destroy Maruna. Not that much of a problem. Not that much of a problem. So let's play the Rot Fiend now. The Rot Fiend is also a nice five-point card that is on the field. And if he gets destroyed, he's going to blow up. So... Herkia. Herkia is four points, so that is absolutely fine. We could even go with Red Riders now, because as long as she's on the melee row, hmm, I'll play the forward and I'll move Herkia to the back row, so they can't use her uh, ability there. So her uh, order ability to split three damage randomly between enemy units on a row. She can't use that now. She is almost dead. Um, and then the... Oof, the Brockfar Hunter. The Brockfar Hunter. Yeah, we could have moved that one as well. But the Cyclops is just really good at its job. Although I really shouldn't actually. I think I'll just bruise that one away. Because right now I don't even need to destroy the... Um, the Rot Fiend. So I'm just going to use a Bruiser to get the Brockfire out of the Frost. And then the Frost is going to take care of Herkia regardless. There we go. Low balling with all of our cards. But uh, aside from Miruna, of course. Then we get the Svalblood Priest. Svalblood Priest is going to do that. But we can also take out the entire board again. Because of the Cyclops killing the Rot Fiends. Killing the Hunter. And then killing the Priest in one go. So that's 22-0 with four cards left in hand. So I'm guessing our opponent is going to pass now. There we go. And that is how you play the first round with Deathwish units. Now, of course, the only problem I have, I played a, quite a 
few Deathwish units now. Uh, so we played Maruna, the Arcaspore. Uh, we actually didn't destroy the Arcaspore, which is stupid. But uh, So if we pull Haunt, there's the other Arcaspore. If we pull Haunt, we need two Deathwish units. But Arcaspore gone, of course. Uh, I don't really need Red Riders here. And we get another uh, Foglet, so more Fog on the on the board if we need to. So we are getting the advantage here with the long round. Our opponents would have been in advantage if they had the long round, so I think I'm just gonna pass now. There we go. We also got Oberon in hand now, which is good. So if we can get Haunt as well, that would be the best outcome of this match. We get a Bruiser, always useful, the Manticore. Could be useful as well, but the Winter Queen is of course useless. And we get the APA in Phantom. I'm gonna get rid of the Foglet. Because I have two Deathwish units if need be. Okay, so we get a, a whole lot of Frost here. Uh, we still have Artgate to pull with Gels, so we just have a buttload of Frost. Okay, interesting. So Sigvault only works on the melee row, so what we're definitely gonna do is just put him away, because that's how we roll. Yeah, let's put White Frost on Sigvault's row. And then I'm just gonna play Aubryon really early. Um, just in case that he survives, that would be nice, but uh, usually he doesn't. It could go with a Hound. The Bruiser is not useful because I can't move anything there, so let's just put the Wild Hunt Hound over there. He'll go to 5 points. Oh no, because of course Sigvald had 6 points. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Still have a Bruiser in hand, so we can still move something to that row if we really want to. And we get Vildkarl. Vildkarl is gonna get... is that Berserk? No, it's Berserk 2. Uh, I don't have a Cyclops, but I do have the foglet do i want to use the foglet i'll use the foglet now just in case our opponent because they're now of course banking on the fact that i'm gonna destroy uh viltcarl hmm. viltcarl is gonna go up to 12 if he reaches two power but with ursine ritual they can trigger it anyway so there he goes 12 points on that big boy now of course that means we lose dominance uh, we get the War of Clans now that's just going to pull the bro- Ooh. They don't have a 4 provision card in hand. Right, I forgot about that. So let's put full Frost on that back row. I could put the- Yeah, let's put the API and Phantom down first. I have a lot of Frost, but... I can still spread it out. It's not that much, actually. I, I still have 3 turns with Gels. I have 2 turns with Eridan. And I have four more turns with Red Riders. Our opponent still has seven cards in hand. So we'll be able to cover the full six turns that are still left on there. And if we now start to play Frost. And we get Udelric. Udelric is gonna be... That's an interesting choice, by the way. Udelric. Um, let's just put Red Riders down now. I'm gonna actually even put... Four points on the back row. There we go. Which could be problematic because, of course, the Foglet could die. If the Foglet dies, then that, those three points, uh, turns of Frost will be transformed into Fog. But it's going to be the same amount of turns, so that doesn't really matter. Udelric would be able to cause a stunning blow to kill the Apiarian Phantom, but even then... Aha, we get Dagur. So Dagur is good. So we're gonna get three points of damage, but with the API and Phantom, we just have enough points to kill Dagur. Because they won't be able to do more than that. Yeah, okay, so now we can just kill Dagur with... Uh... And Dagur is actually also roll-locked. Yeah, we can actually just use the, the Wild Hunt Bruiser. Do we? Yeah, we do. We definitely do. So let's get rid of Dagur there as well. Um, we don't need to waste Imlerit's Rod just yet. Because right now, Imlerit's Rod is good enough to use um, the API. We, we have Dominance again. So we can also use Eridan. Eridan might actually be better now. Uh, but I'll first put the Art Gate card on top of the board now. 
Because I'm guessing there's going to be a Saris still in that deck. It's a really f cool self wound deck. I wouldn't have added Dagui in that deck, but it's a cool variation on the deck. And because we still we have dominance now, or uh, yeah, that thing was gonna survive, but no, it's not. It's gonna be ah. I thought the last huh. I was convinced that they would use the last Uldric charge. They're probably banking on the um, bloodthirst there, uh, which means that I should now probably just go with Eridan on top of there, so that gives us three points every single time. But I should have killed. Yeah, I should have killed um, Emmett. I'm gonna lose. Yeah, because he can of course heal. Champion as Fallblood can heal by destroying... Um, what's his face? Blue Boy, uh, Madman Lugos. I had the last name correct. So we got Geralt Quen out. Geralt Quen on top of... the proper Geralt. Which means that we also lose our dominance just in total. Because we don't have the Ethereum Phantom, and there he goes again. Okay. Okay. Painful, but not that bad. We can just play Gals now. Gals is gonna put Art Gate on the board, and that's the remaining match just completely up in Frost. So that's definitely gonna be at least uh, six more points, as long as there's nothing on the melee row anymore. Uh, but other than that, I really don't have a good hand anymore. So if our opponents. I think our opponent's gonna win this. And we get hits on Geralt Quen. Which is then transformed. But that's not gonna matter because there's still two turns of frost there, so it's just giving me points right now. I'll put the Imperial Manticore down now. Just because we get a Trive Tick on the Winter Queen. And we're gonna get one on the Bargas then as well. And we can destroy something. It's gonna just be Geralt there, but. Better than nothing, I suppose. It's gonna be really close, by the way, because the Bargas is gonna give us um, the advantage again. Uh, okay. Um, or not. I mean, the Frost is gonna do that, so let's just consume the Imperial Manticore. Kill that Geralt. And we did get a Thrive Trigger on the Winter Queen, but we didn't gain Dominance in our turn. But we're 7 points ahead with no Frost Trigger anymore, but we still have Dominance. We get... Yeah, they still need to take away 3 points of damage. They'll probably have a Bear School Mentor, I would think. With the amount of Bloodthirst they're generating. Oh no, Erden. Erden, ooh. So that is... Very smart, because I don't have an option for that anymore. Damn it! Okay. Yeah, they kind of won that in the last... With just Erden, that was... Yeah, Erden is a card that really needs to go. Uh, so yeah, we can just do Imrit's Wrath over there. That's gonna give us seven points. Another... A single point on the, uh, the Wild Hunt Hound, but it's not gonna be enough. Ah, oh, that sucks. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do I still have something that I can do here? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's not gonna matter. Because I can consume something, but it's not gonna matter. I mean, I could do this, but it's, yeah. If I could have done the consume beforehand, that was actually really close. If I could have done the consume beforehand, I could have made the bargain big enough so we could hit the, uh, the champion for more. But that was really good. Okay. But uh, I think that kind of proved the point. The deck is good, but not extremely good. So remember, I am playing on pro rank. So if you're still ranking up the ladder, this is a very powerful deck regardless. Um, it has a lot of tools that allows you to both be very aggressive and just keep your opponent's board really low. So if you're ranking up, I would urge you to give this deck a try. The deck list is in the description down below. So really... Let me know what you think about this. Give it a like over there as well, because that really helps with the uh, exposure of my decks and deck guides. Um, and yeah, it's it's just something different. It's not in the meta anywhere, for obvious reasons. There's a few decks that are really powerful against this. Uh, like, for example, against elves, you will probably not uh, win just because of the elves' uh, power level. The elves always start at three, so every time you do two damage, You'll have to do two damage again, but you lose a point every single time because they always start at three. 
Um, both for the fog and for the frost, it just hurts this deck enormously. But other than that, um, there's a lot of decks that this actually works against. As you saw, the first match against Reckless Flurry, it's something that they have a really hard time of dealing with just because of the amount of tools that you have in this deck. Um, and don't underestimate the weather, it's just really, really strong, especially with the Ancient Foglets. You saw that we had an Ancient Foglet of a very high po point total in that first uh, match as well. So yeah, definitely, definitely worth a try. And that's it for today's episode of Gwentesh. What did you think of the Deadly Chills deck? Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any improvements, tips, whatever. We're here to help each other out. Um, yeah, because it, it, it's a really fun deck. It's not something that I usually play, but it's monsters that is still very aggressive. So uh, that's why I feel like it's really cool to play around with. So uh, thank you guys. I'm Elsie for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentage. If you want to talk, you can also check me out on Twitter, by the way. That's uh, D-R-O-V-N-U-T, Trovinet. You can find me there as well if you want to talk. But uh, with that done, thank you guys, and I'm Elsie for watching, and see you guys in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye, and stay nutty.